Hey, my friend, this is my first little, and I never know the word is flore or foray, into the art of being lonely, because it is an art. It is a science of being lonely. You try bloody hard and you get better at it and better at it. And it can be painful. It can be, well, it can have anxiety, it can have fear. And that's what I want to get rid of. So we can all be comfortable in our own skins, in our own environment and just love being alive. So please have a listen because it really is important. Have a listen after this. Hey, this is the Personal Development Unplugged podcast where we use hypnosis. Yeah, hypnosis. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Don't worry what it is. It's just a mass of processes that we're going to get you to change. Change to let go of anxiety, low self-esteem, and create massive, massive supreme inner confidence. But that's confidence in your competence and confidence in your confidence, which means you can do anything and be, well, be safe to enjoy. Enjoy the world as it should be with you at the helm, creating the life that you want. That's what this podcast is about, you and being the best you you could be, singing from your real voice, aligned with your mission, aligned with your passions. That's what it's about. So if you're interested in letting go of anxiety, if you're interested in letting go of fear, guilt, all those blooming syndromes, imposter syndromes, and every little bit of the mind which is negative, then have a listen here because we've got some wonderful processes and lots of good conversations with between you and me to get us both thinking in such wonderful ways. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Just take the trance to have a, have a listen. This is Personal Development Unplugged with Paul Clough. In simplicity, there is genius. In simplicity, there is genius. Hey friends, a longer podcast and call it Loneliness Part 1, because I think there'll be more. It's my, like my first little sauté. Is it a sauté into loneliness? And probably if you are lonely and suffering from loneliness, i got a feeling you're going to think, well, this approach that Clough is taking is a bit simplistic, a bit too simplistic, because loneliness can be really painful, can't it? You know, I love simplicity. Simpli- in simplicity, there is genius. If we can break things down into simple steps, we can achieve success in every step. And every step with that success builds on success. So bear with me, bear with me, just come with me. And we'll see where we go. We'll have a little process and we'll just, just, well, we'll just have a look from the outside in. Because I have a few problems and issues with loneliness. Not big, not big. I'm not going to go there. I'm an introvert, so I don't like speaking. But here I am speaking to you. I do a lot of it. Put different hats on. But I'll tell you about my little loneliness or what, what, something that helped me through it. But the first thing you need to do is to know that it's not a conscious decision. You are not deciding to be lonely. What? Well, think about this. If you consciously decided to create this in your life, to create this loneliness and all the emotions that go with it, all the behaviours that go with it, well, if it's a conscious decision, you'd wake up in the morning and consciously decide, fuck it, I'm not going to do it anymore. You would, wouldn't you? That's what you'd probably, well, I don't know if you'd say that. That's what, that's what Cluffy would say. But it's not a conscious decision because I bet you've tried that. Most of the people who come to see me as a, with a, as a therapist with any of their things, any of their issues, we explain it's not consciously decided to react that way because you've thought about it so many times over and over again in your head and the pain of thinking about it. And again, if say if it's conscious, you would have just said, fuck it, I'm not going to do it, and you wouldn't do it. But even if you said that, 
it probably hasn't gone. And the more you think about, guess what? It's an old saying. What you think about most of all is what you get, whether you like it or not. And if you're thinking about that behaviour, yes, it's a behaviour of loneliness, you tend to get more of it because we're in it all the time. And I can't describe to you the feeling of loneliness. I can describe to you my feeling of loneliness. And with it, and I wrote some notes down, and I guess they're my notes. Well, they are my notes, but they're, they're my feelings. You see, knowing it's only behaviour, but that behaviour comes with emotions, doesn't it? That behaviour comes with emotions, and the emotions such as sadness, guilt, maybe fear, maybe anxiety. You name it. Lots of stuff. Agoraphobia. But what's agoraphobia? That's just a fear, isn't it? It's anxiety. But the thing is, you see, and again, this is my belief, and you're going to probably say, well, that's a lot of old balls, Paul, but it isn't. I tell you that now, it isn't. See, every behavior has a positive intention. It's a presupposition of NLP. This is the way I was brought up on. Well, 23 years I was brought up on this. And it has, for the person. Anything that anybody's doing in the world has a positive intention for that person. It may affect other people, but for, their, for them, it, it's positive. Or, here's the kicker, I guess, when it first started. The positive intention is still there, but it's now the behaviours are inappropriate. But right back then, when you first started this, unconsciously decided to be maybe a little bit introvert, maybe just pull him back. It was the best thing that your best friend could do for you. With the wisdom, which was very little, the experience, which was very little, it did something for you. It maybe gave you those emotions, gave the the behaviour of pulling away from people. And then over time, it just gets worse. It builds. I bet you noticed, I bet if I asked you now, as you thought about that loneliness to not a 10 out of 10, everybody, Five out of ten. If you were to go into that feeling, you would notice that it's grown over the years. It's got more intense over the years. Because it does. I know it does. You know it does. But this is loneliness. So there's one thing about it. You've only got me to listen to. <laughs> and I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I'm, I'm the same. And you see, the trouble with this wonderful intention, we don't know what it is yet, but well, and sometimes you don't even need to know. Your unconscious mind just needs to know what its intention is to remind itself. Because sometimes even unconscious minds forget the intention. They just keep doing the same bloody behavior again, over and over again. And that behavior can be, as I said, emotions, but more and more intense. But you see, when it gets to become an issue like this, it means it's in direct conflict with itself. Your unconscious mind is in a direct conflict in itself. What does that mean, Cluffy? How can that be so? Well, think about this for a little while. Whatever you're feeling, and just really notice most of this is probably what is protecting you from. What? I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. Now, these are phobic stories. One of them was a woman. She came to see me about driving phobia. She said, You can't drive beyond eight miles out of her, the place where she lived. And she lived in a village out of nowhere. And she couldn't drive beyond eight miles. And she said, I have to drive her beyond eight miles because I want to see my family. My family's left me. Not left me, as left me, left me. But they moved out. Families move on. They, they, the children moved on. They got married. They have kids. And they've all moved to different parts of uh, the country. Not too far away, but beyond eight miles. And I thought eight miles is really weird. I didn't, didn't understand the eight. But hey how we worked on this, and we started talking. And she said, as soon as I get to that, that round about eight miles, I have this anxiety, a panic attack. I just can't. I have to turn around and go home. It's terrible, and I really want to see my family. Terrible. And it was, for her. She was very family orientated. And then she said, why does this memory keep coming up, Paul? And they do, you see, they do. And it was a memory. It wasn't a harsh memory. She said it's about memories. Of, well, it's actually memories. Memories of my mother. We love mum. 
The whole family loved Mum. Mum was Mum. She looked after the family. But she had problems. And occasionally she would go out. And we never knew when she was coming back. She'd go shopping and then not come back for a couple of days. We never knew when she was coming back. And we really wanted to keep the family together. And then she swore. She said, oh, bollocks. <laughs> She's a funny girl. She said, oh, look at this. I get you talking about positive intention. I want to keep my family together. And my unconscious mind is saying, stay at home, stay at home. Because that's where mum had to, mum always came back home. But I'm mum now and everyone's disappeared. They're out beyond this thing. And if I want to keep my family together, I need to be able to, dr oh, that's it. She said, I just don't think I, I've got the problem anymore. And we did a little process just to give you that confidence of going beyond the eight miles. But it's like the unconscious mind said, I've got it wrong. Thought I was keeping the family together by keeping you at home. And everyone else has actually left. And you need to go out, be able to connect with them. And the same thing happened with a guy I worked with. And it was all about phobia of flying. It was really weird because he said, can't get on a plane, Paul. And, and I need to go and see my, my family in Italy. I have a whole family in Italy. And I have my family here in bright little Bournemouth. He said, it's so frustrating because... I really want to bring the whole family together. But I can't get on a plane. He said, funny though, I also find it when I go to London. Because he said, I work in London occasionally. And maybe on a tube, on the train, even in a taxi, I get these feelings. I get this real feel, you know, weird feeling, get it right, Cluffy, weird, a weird feeling right here in my stomach. And he explained, you know, we said, just go in there and just notice it. And as you notice it, what happens? And he said, damn, 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 damn. I whoa, whoa, what was happening? He said, I can remember, remember my dad. He took me into this, we had a little car, tiny little car. And he took me into this little car. And I wasn't very old. And he explained to me that he was leaving, leaving the family, and that I would never see him again. And my dad was the one thing that, well, not just the one thing, but he said, we, we're Italian, we're family. We're, everything is family. And he left. And I never, never came back again. And that's why family is so important to me. And then he thought, that's why I can't get on a plane at the moment. Because it's as if I'm leaving my family in Bournemouth. It's as if I'm, when I'm on that tube or the train, it's as if I'm leaving my family. Never come back. And of course I'm glad he's coming back, he said. In fact, I want to bring the family together. And it was like the unconscious mind said, Ah, I want to keep the family together for you too. The whole family now. And it was literally a little bit of talking, a little bit of process, a little bit of hypnosis to get the unconscious mind to work out ways that it could keep him safe to keep the whole family together. And do you know what? Both of those phobics disappeared because they weren't phobic, were they? It wasn't a phobia. It was their unconscious mind trying to do something for them. And you can see they're in like direct conflict with each other. What it was trying to do was actually doing the complete opposite and giving them the feelings of loss, of fear. And you see things like, and I'm not going to put it into your head, but I will a little bit. Things like I said, like loneliness is just to behave with emotion with emotions such as sadness, guilt, and fear. It's like the, the fear of getting hurt if I, if I do that again and, and those people or whatever. But the thing is, by not going and meeting people, not going to do, get outside or do the, just be with people to stop being alone, it's fearful, isn't it? So your unconscious mind is actually giving you the fear that it's trying to protect you from. Because when we're alone, sometimes it's frightening. We're just, I don't know, it's just that real thing. But here's the thing. And this is my, as I say, this is my first little dive into loneliness. So bear with me because I haven't got it all. I haven't suffered loneliness. So it's very difficult to empathize and I need help sometimes for, to, to explain the feelings so we can get really into it a bit deeper. But the thing is, I wrote this in my my book and I never realized why and I'm thinking of, and when I was writing my notes for this little thing 
these thoughts came back. And they were in my very first journals. And I used to write it in every journal, in the first few pages, or the first page. And I want you to think about this. And maybe you could write it in a journal yourself, or just a piece of paper or a card. And there's only three lines. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe nine words, maybe a little bit more. And they start with, you're not alone. Yes, bloody hell, Cluffy. We're talking about loneliness. But no, I write to myself, you're not alone. I was writing to myself. And you're not by yourself. It seems strange. And then I wrote, you're with yourself. Your best friend. That was the extra two words. But I always was, I'm with myself. There's always me. And now I've even got my unconscious mind is thinking of it like a twin. My best friend, who's really me and I'm them, him. And it's really strange. But those words that saying, and I normally say, I'm not alone. I'm not by myself. I'm with myself. You put it anywhere you like. But it just, for me, made a difference. It just made a difference. Now, here's the thing. And I'd love to do a little a little thing with you, just for the moment. And because you're alone, you're not going out very much, so you can practice this quite a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm laughing with, with ourselves, basically. You see, I want you to imagine something. Now, could be when you suffer from, you know, the sadness, the guilt, or fear, or anxiety. This, you think, well, I can't really get to imagine, because I want you to imagine doing something, taking those first steps. And I don't know what those first steps are towards, because it's your imagination. But you can think, well, Cluffy, even taking the small step towards what, you know, I can't imagine what I really want, because it's just too far out there. But you can, if you do it this way. I want you to give yourself permission to imagine something that may never, ever happen. And because it may never, ever happen, you can imagine it, because it's not going to happen. You can imagine anything that's not going to happen, because you're free to imagine it now. There's no pressure. So just imagine. And you want to do this with you. I want you just to gently close your eyes. That's right, just close your eyes. We're not going to deep hypnosis, because it's, this is just imagination. And the thing about your imagination is it, it, it's yours. I can guide you, but I can't control your imagination. No one can control your imagination, only you. You're the boss. You're the bossess. <laughs> so just imagine that scenario. Imagine just one, it's a specific scenario that you might like to do. And it's not going to happen, but if you could, what would it look like? If you were to see a you over there, maybe it's like a movie and you're that star of the movie and you're not a movie star, so it's never going to happen. But if you could imagine it now, what would you look like? Being the way you would want to be. Being free. What, em what emotions would you have over there being able to do that. And remember, it's never going to happen, so you can have anything you like. How confident would you be? Now, it wouldn't be overconfidence, would it? It would just be maybe a comfortable confidence in your own skin. Just walking gently, comfortably, knowing that it's okay. And the feeling of comfort is a wonderful thing to have. When you just feel comfort, it's just wonderful. So you could just be over there comfortably going about that thing. What belief would you what belief would you have to have about yourself? Things like, I don't know, I'm okay. I've got this. Things like that. Just little beliefs. They may be simple and in simplicity there's genius, but little beliefs like that, I've got this. I can do this. It's so powerful. And notice when you say that belief, I've got this. 
I can do this. Notice how that you out there just becomes so much more at ease. Maybe they're thinking, that you over there is thinking, what else? But that's maybe too far, is it? They're over there and anything is possible in your imagination. And I don't know. If you could really get to understand what they're thinking, what they're enjoying, what they're learning. Just looking over there at them over there. Yeah? Who are they meeting? Notice how they interact. Now, they may not be meeting anybody. That you over there might be just walking. But notice how you interact with the environment now. Looking around, taking it all in and going, fuck, this is nice. Excuse me swearing, but that's what I would say. Fuck, this is nice out here. I'm having a comfortable ball out here. Now, for this particular moment, I'm not going to ask you to float into that you out there and experience it because that might be too big a jump. But what you can do is ask your unconscious mind to learn from this. Learn from that you out there. And notice how it can use those learnings to begin to formulate a real step. So you're not alone. So you're not by yourself. But you're really supported with yourself. And maybe, just maybe, those learnings you'd feel that little bit of a desire to maybe float out into that person, that you out there, and feel what it feels like in your imagination. Because that's all it is. You're safe when you're in your imagination. You can float out there. Feel what it would feel like to be that you out there. Just feel it. Feel that comfort. Feel that freedom. Feel that peace. And as you feel it, you can bring it back inside you right now. And that you out there can just, well, you can imagine them coming back into you. So your unconscious mind can begin to learn, learn what it can do, and learn more importantly of the conflict. We want to keep that intention of keeping you safe and comfortable. But to realize the behavior is now in direct conflict with what it's trying to do for you. Because it's not keeping you safe and it's not keeping you comfortable. It's actually creating the very thing, the emotions and behaviors that it doesn't want for you. But just this little process, it will begin to learn how to be different now. And when your unconscious minds begin to process that, maybe you'll be surprised that you begin to do things. Now open your eyes and come back to me. That was just imagination. And all you got to do is, guess what? Find this point in this recording and play it again and do it again. And you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time on your hands. Just do it. Maybe think of a different time, a different scenario, a different context, and play with your imagination, because it's only play. But the more you play, the more you get that feeling, and the more you feel those feelings. You're telling your unconscious mind, this is, well, this might be nice. So do it every day, maybe more than that, and really feel those feelings. It becomes what Neville Goddard said. The Feeling of the Wish Fulfilled. Find that book. It's a very old book. Neville Goddard. The Feeling of the Wish Fulfilled. But just know that when you feel it, and then you get to that thing of what you think about most of the time, which is this feeling now, you're going to get. And that feeling is comfort. It's freedom. It's safety, which is what your unconscious mind wants for you. 
So there you go. That was my first little, is it flurry? Flurry? Foray. I don't know what's the word. I'm not very good at words. Am I? I don't know. My first little adventure into the world of, of trying to explain loneliness. And I can only do it my way. So if you have any thoughts whatsoever, please email me. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com comes to me. And then we can, and I'm the only one here. I'm the only bugger here. So I'll, I'll take, take my notes from it and see if I can get a deeper dive or another, not necessarily deeper, but look at it at loneliness from a different perspective, your perspective. And the thing is, if I can get your perspective and get you to change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Hey, played with the words. And I don't know who said that. It may have been Wayne Dyer again. Love that man. Even though he's not here, still love him. Yeah, if I can get you to change the way it look at, you look at things, then the things you look at will change. And the world will change. And the world needs you. The world needs you out there. Sharing. Doing. You know, share, if nothing else, sharing how you did it, how you let go of loneliness and encourage and inspire others. That would be the most wonderful bit of selfless service you could ever do. Use this experience to share it with others. I'll just say that again, to share it with others. That would be a wonderful thing to do, wouldn't it? Because if you just change one person, that's you for a start, and then another one person, and they change one person, or maybe change two, and those two people changed maybe two people, exponentially, loneliness starts to disappear from this world. Wouldn't that be a great thing? That would be an awesome bloody thing. Too right it would. So as I said, this is my first little dive into loneliness. Help me. I'm going to do some more. I'm going to explore, try to explore my little bit of loneliness as well, see if I can get another way, another perspective of looking at it. And if you know of anybody who's lonely, you probably don't because you're too, lo too bloody lonely. You're by yourself. And again, I'm joking. But if you know one person, or if you could just talk to one person, ask for this little bit of help, baby. Like a partner, a buddy. Let's go sit in the park. Let's go and sit on the wall just outside the house, wherever you are. Let's just go on a bike, bike ride. Let's go and see nature, the wonder of the world. Little things like that. You don't have to go into big crowds. You just go and start. Small steps, baby steps, little steps, whatever you want to call them. The smallest step possible. And then a little bigger. We talk about that. I'll remind you of other things as we go along. Anyway, please, if you do, anybody, please share this. Share this with everyone you know. Because the thing is, if you share it with people who aren't lonely... They get to understand maybe a little bit more about loneliness and can help. But they'll also know somebody who it might help. But also, I think everyone has bouts of loneliness. I know I do. And these things really, really help. So again, if it's just like that little bit of information that goes in your back pocket, so when you, you need it, you can pull it out metaphorically and go, oh, I know about this. I'm just going to imagine. Imagine. And with that, I want you to imagine it's time to fly away. Have more fun than you can stand. Imagining. Diving into that imagination. And just remember, a little tip. Doesn't matter if you can't see it in your imagination. Because some people will say, Oh, Cluffy, I can't visualise. And yes, you can. But sometimes visualisation is just an awareness of a you out there. Or it could be 2020 vision, or it could be anything in between. And it changes, so don't worry about it. Just go through that process. Mark off the times. If I can, maybe I'll do a separate little visualization for you. But there's there's loads of them. I think I've got one or two on on my free hypnosis tracks. And they're not all hypnosis, they're NLP processes like this. So go there. PaulCloughOnline.com forward slash podcast. You get that and it's, you'll get a link and you go to and you can pick out 
a few of those visualizations there to help you practice. Because what does practice make? No, it doesn't make bloody perfect, I'll tell you that before. It makes permanent. Good practice makes good permanence and get your imagination really buzzing. Anyway, I've gone on too long. Have a wonderful day. And I'll speak to you real soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye. Oh, and just before you do fly, if you do want to come back to this, to the actual process itself, it's around about, I just had a look on the editing, it's around about 18 minutes in, and it goes from 18 minutes to just before 24. So it's not too long, but it's 18 minutes in, go back to that, and you've got it. Now it's time to fly. See you soon. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.